Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on the anatomy of the nose. Now I've divided this into three parts where in the first video we'll talk briefly about the external nose. We'll talk in detail about the nasal cavity and the medial wall which is the nasal septum. Then we'll talk in the next video about the lateral wall. And finally we'll conclude by talking about the innervation, the blood supply, the venous drainage and the lymphatic drainage in detail. So starting with the anatomy of the nose. The first thing I want to remind you are the five functions that it performs. It performs the function of olfaction, which is the perception of smell, respiration, filtration and humidification of the inspired air, as well as reception and elimination of the secretions from the paranasal sinuses and the nasolacrimal ducts. So in this way, it performs five basic functions. And the anatomy of the nose can easily be visualized keeping these in mind because different parts of the nose have evolved to perform these functions. Coming to the outline of the nose, we see that it is formed from two regions. It is divided into two regions, which are the external nose and the nasal cavity. Now the external nose, it is pyramidal in shape and it projects forward from the face. It has an upper end which is continuous with the forehead and its lower end has two orifices which are called the nares or the nostrils. Now apart from that, it is partly made up of bone and partly made up of cartilage. So the bones that contribute to its formation are the paired nasal bones, the frontal process of the maxillary bone and parts of the frontal bone. And the cartilages that contribute to its formation are the lateral cartilage, the major alar cartilage, three to four minor alar cartilages, and one septal cartilage lying in the midline, which also forms the anterior part of the medial wall. So, so far we have seen that one of the parts of the nose is the external nose, which projects forward from the face. It has an upper end and a lower end. The lower end has two nostrils and its framework is made up of partly bone and partly cartilage. So the bones that contributed were the nasal bones, the frontal process of the maxilla and the parts of frontal bone and the cartilages were these. Now coming to the innervation of the external nose, we see that it is supplied by two branches from the maxillary nerve and one branch from the ophthalmic, both of which are branches of trigeminal nerve and tone. So the branches from the maxillary nerve are the infratrochlear and the infraorbital and the branch from the ophthalmic is the external nasal. Now before I move on to talking about the nasal cavity, I want to mention briefly about the external nasal. So you see that the external nasal, it is in turn a branch of the anterior ethmoidal nerve and the anterior ethmoidal is a branch of the ophthalmic nerve. Now the anterior ethmoidal, as you can see, it supplies both the lateral wall and the nasal septum. And after doing so, it travels between the nasal bone and the lateral alar cartilage to emerge on the face as the external nasal nerve, right? So it is a branch of the anterior ethmoidal, which has supplied both our lateral wall and the nasal septum. After that, it has passed between the nasal bone and the lateral cartilage to emerge onto the face as the external nasal nerve, where it supplies the nares and the skin over the external nose. So we'll talk in more detail about the anterior ethmoidal nerve when we come to the innervation of the nasal cavity. But now you can remember that the external nose, it is supplied by two branches from the maxillary and one branch from the ophthalmic nerve. Now coming to our main topic, which is the nasal cavity. Now you see the nasal cavity, it extends from the nostrils, as we've already seen, right? It extends from the nostrils up to the posterior nasal apertures, which are also called the cornea. Here, it opens behind into the nasal pharynx. So if we see in this representational diagram, you can see that the nasal cavity it forms the superior most part of the respiratory system. Anteriorly, it continues from the nostrils or the nares 
up to the posterior nasal apertures, which opens behind into the nasopharynx, we see that it is inferiorly related to the oral cavity and it is separated from it by the heart palate. And in the midline lies the nasal septum, which divides it into the right and the left halves, right? So in the middle, it is divided by the nasal septum into the right and the left half. Now, each half of the nasal cavity, it is composed, composed of two portions. One is the skin line portion and the other is the mucosa line portion. So, just at the opening of the nostrils, in the anterior most portion, we have the skin line portion, right? This, this is basically composed of sebaceous glands, hair follicles and vibrissae, which are the fine nasal hairs. And posterior to that is the nasal mucosa line portion. This mucosa line portion in the upper one third, which is the superior one third, it has the olfactory mucosa, which is involved in the perception of smell, and inferior two third forms the respiratory area, right? So the respiratory area, it has these conchae and terminates, which form the nasal passages involved in humidification and warmth of the air. Coming to the boundaries of the nasal cavity. So we have already seen, right, that it is divided into two halves by the nasal septum, which divides it into the right and the left nasal cavity. So this way, each part of it would have a floor, it would have a roof, and it would have a median and a lateral wall. Coming to the floor. The floor, as it is separated from the oral cavity inferiorly, there's the heart palate. And as we know, the heart palate, it is basically comprised of maxilla and the palatine bone. Right? So anteriorly, we have the palatine process of the maxilla, and posteriorly, we have the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Apart from that, when we come to the roof, we, this entire structure is the roof. So we see that the roof is curved and narrow, except at its posterior end where it's broader. So basically the nasal cavity is sort of a wedge-shaped structure, right? Anteriorly it is narrow, and as it goes posteriorly, it becomes broader. So here we see that it's got three parts, okay? The roof has three parts. One is the central or the middle horizontal part. Then it's got an anterior part which slopes inferiorly, and then a posterior part which slopes inferiorly. So in the horizontal part, we see that it is composed of the cribriform plate of the ethmoid, right? In the middle, it is formed by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid. Anteriorly, it slopes downward, where it is formed by the nasal spine of the frontal bone, the nasal bone, and also by the septal cartilage. And posteriorly as well, it slopes downward, where it is formed by the downward sloping body of the sphenoid. So you can see it in this diagram as well. Probably the bones are more detailed here. The nasal spine of the frontal bone, the nasal bone and the septal cartilage, which are the anterior part. The middle part is the cribriform plate of the ethmoid, and posteriorly it is the downward sloping body of the sphenoid bone. It also receives minor contributions from the sphenoid process of the palatine and the medial plate of the pterygoid. Anyhow, now that we have done with the floor and the roof, let's move on to the more important middle wall. Now we know that the middle wall, it is made up of the nasal septum and it divides the nasal cavity into two halves, which are the right and the left half. Now if we see it in the mid-sagittal plane, we would see that the nasal septum, it is oriented vertically and it is covered by mucosa. Apart from that, we also see, just like the external nose, it is osteocartilaginous. That means it's partly formed of bone and partly formed of cartilage. So the major contributors to the structure of the nasal septum would be the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the individual bone, which is the bone. And the cartilage that contributes is the septal cartilage. So mainly it is formed of the perpendicular plate of ethmoid, the vomer, and the septal cartilage, but it also receives minor contributions from the nasal bone, the 
quantum pole the sphenoid bone the palatine bone and the maxillary bone right apart from that it also receives minor contribution from the inferior nasal cartilage from the septal process of the inferior nasal cartilage so let's come back to the structure of the medial wall we know that it is osteocartilaginous it lies in the midline mainly formed of the ethmoid and the boma apart from that it also receives contributions from the nasal bone the frontal spine of the uh, the nasal spine of the frontal bone the sphenoid bone the palatine bone and the maxillary bone and the cartilage is involved were the septal cartilage and the inferior nasal cartilage now its lower end the lower margin is called the columella and it is formed by fibrofatty tissue covered by skin apart from that the septum also has four borders and two surfaces so the two surfaces would be on either side of the nasal cavity right so one would be the left and the other would be the right and the surface and the borders would be let me show you here so this is a nasal septum and we divide it into four halves we would get the anterior superior the anterior inferior the posterior inferior and the posterior superior part right this entire thing is anterior this is posterior this is superior and this is inferior so our four division would bring us the the anterior superior anterior inferior posterior inferior and the posterior superior part now coming to the clinical anatomy points relevant to the nasal septum first and foremost we see that the usually the nasal septum is situated in the midline however it is not uncommon to see it deviated to one or the other side right so it's not uncommon to see it deviated to one or the other side and this in turn would make one side of the nasal cavity bigger and the other smaller this is often a secondary to direct trauma an extreme septal deviation can produce nasal occlusion this deviation can also be corrected surgically finally we come to the last clinical anatomy point relevant to the nasal septum which is the little cilia now although i'm going to discuss the arterial supply in another video i'll tell you in brief about it See the nasal septum. It is supplied by the anterior ethmoidal, posterior ethmoidal, the sphenopalatine, greater palatine, and the facial, the superior labial branch of the facial artery. Right. So all of these in the anterior inferior part of the nasal septum, the anastomose, and this forms the rich, large capillary network, which is called the Kesselbach's plexus. Now, obviously, this is the common site of bleeding from the nose or epistaxis, and hence it is known as the little cilia. So, what was it? It was the area formed by the anastomosis of the ethmoidal arteries, the septal branch of the sphenopalatine artery, the greater palatine artery, and the facial artery, being the most common site of bleeding from the nasal. I would prefer to discuss the arterial supply, the venous drainage, and the nerve supply in the next video because it's not enough to just know the names, right? We will study in detail about the cause, the origin, and what parts they supply. So I hope to see you in another video soon. And before that, let's just quickly summarize what we've studied. We have seen, uh, so we have seen that the nose is comprised of the external nose and the nasal cavity. We have seen the external nose, it projected forward, it was osteocartilaginous, formed of the nasal bone, maxillary bone, frontal bone, and these cartilages. We saw that it was innervated by branches of maxillary and ophthalmic nerve. We saw the nasal cavity was uh, superior to the oral cavity, anterior to the nasal pharynx, supplied, separated into the right and left halves by the nasal septum. We saw that anteriorly it had the skin line portion and posteriorly the mucosa line portion. We saw its boundaries, we saw the floor, which was contributed by the maxilla and the palatine bone. We saw the various bones that contributed to its 
through we also saw the medial wall and how it as well as osteocartilaginous we saw all of its contributors and we also saw two clinically anatomy relevant points which were the deviated nasal septum and the presence of the little zero so i hope to see you in the next video regarding nasal cavity soon and thank you so much for watching have a good day